<coughs> yeah, you missed that. Okay, so today we will discuss the Elisabeth's rule and Taylor's theorem. Uh, we have seen already if the limit of the function f x when say x tends to say suppose a is our uh, x tends to say c is say a and limit g x when x tends to c is say suppose b then if b is not equal to 0 then one can find the limit of the f x by g x when x tends to c and basically this is equal to the a by b ok. But if suppose in case a is also 0 b is also 0 if b is 0 a may be anything then also we can discuss something and it is shown that if the limit of the derivative exists then this must be say 0 and in case if this b is 0 and a is less than 0 negative minus infinity and b is 0 a is positive then limit will go to the plus infinity. Now, the case when a and b both are tending uh, having the limit value with 0. So, when you consider the limit of the function f x over g x when x tends to c it comes out to be 0 over 0 form which is known as the indeterminate form indeterminate form. Why indeterminate because you cannot say the value of this is 1 all value is some finite number all value does not exist. In fact, 0 over 0 the well it may exist value the limit may exist limit may not exist also and like this. For example, if we take the function f x say alpha times of x and g x say x and choose the limit c at 0 then obviously limit of f x as x tends to 0 is 0 which is the limit of g x when x tends to 0 both are coming to be 0. So, when you take the limit of f x over g x as x tends to 0 uh, then in fact uh, this uh, uh, is coming to be if you take the limit of f x over limit of g x then it is basically coming to be 0 over 0 form. But if I substitute the value f x in g x then the limit will come out to be alpha because x will get cancelled and x is independent of any x. So, limit will come out to be alpha a real number where alpha is a real number. So, it means the limit of this 0 over g, uh, f x by g x when it amounts to be the 0 over 0 then it may exist and may have a value a real number or sometimes may not exist also that we will take few, some example where the limit does not exist in the case. Okay. Uh, say for example, limit does not exist suppose I take another one f x equal to x sin say 1 by x and g x is equal to x. So, if I take c equal to 0 then both the limits f x when x tends to 0 is 0 limit g x when x tends to 0 is also 0. But when you take the limit of f x by g x as x tends to 0 it is it is coming out to be the limit of sin 1 by x when x tends to 0 which does not exist. So, in the initial form it is 0 over 0 form, but basically the limit does not exist. So, that is why to evaluate such case or to find the limit of f x by g x when it amounts to be 0 over 0 uh, then we require some rules and that is given by the last Now, one more thing here we are choosing the limit even uh, when if f of c is 0 or g of c is also 0 then in that case limit of f x y g x when x tends to c 
is also in the same form 0 over 0 it takes this form which is also in determinant form. So, if the function is defined at the point c limiting point and if it is coming to be 0 over 0 then the limit of f x over g x to calculate the limit becomes a problem or even the limiting value is also coming 0 by 0 then it is also we cannot use any uh, limit rules for the limits that limit of the rational function is the limit of the numerator over the limit of the denominator which we cannot apply here. So, in such a cases we require the some concepts and that is to how to evaluate this limit of this ratio when it is coming to be 0 over 0 form and that is given by the last plus. So, before going to last plus there is one we will say uh, the indeterminate forms is the 0 over 0 is the only indeterminate form? No, there are many cases which can which are considered as an indeterminate form. So, let me say the indeterminate forms. These forms are first form is 0 over 0, infinity over infinity is also considered to be indeterminate form 0 into infinity that is if f x tends to 0 g x tends to infinity then f x into g x this limit will go to 0 into infinity form or f x by g x if g x also then 0 to the power 0 if f x tends to 0 g x tends to 0 then limit of f x to the power g x this okay. when x tends to c if it is coming to be 0 to the power 0 then it is also considered to be the lim indeterminate form. 1 to the power infinity will also be taken as indeterminate form and infinity to the power 0 is indeterminate form infinity minus infinity is also an indeterminate form. So, there are various types uh, situation where we can say the limit uh, the forms which you are of getting is an indeterminate form. So, to evaluate this type we require certain tricks. Okay because just by substituting the value or taking the limit uh, we cannot say the limit is correct okay? or we cannot evaluate the limit also. So, before going for the last plus let us see the one result which only requires the concept of the derivative and nothing more. What this result say let f and g be defined on a closed and bounded interval a b and let the value of the function at the point a is 0 value of the function g at the point a is also 0 and let g x is not equal to 0 for a less than x less than b. Now, if our f and g all differentiable function at a and if g prime a is not 0 then the limit of f over g then limit of f x over g x when x tends to a exist and is equal to equal to a prime a over g prime a. <coughs> so, this is the result. Now, here in this theorem we have assumed the function f and g both are attending the value 0 at the point a. So, when you take the limit of x over f x over g x when x tends to a basically it is of the form 0 by 0. Okay. But, what this theorem says if f and g are differentiable at the point a and if the g dash a is not 0 then basic this indeterminate form has a value and equal to a prime a over g prime a. Okay. The proof of this follows like Okay. Now, since f a and g a both are 0. So, we can write it 
f x y g x for x. So, for x lying between a and b, uh, we can write f x by g x x f x minus f a over g x minus g a, because these two values are 0. Okay? And this can be written as f x minus f a divided by x minus a, because x is strictly greater than a, I am choosing. So, uh, the denominator is non zero g x minus g a divided by x minus a. Now, if we take the limit as x tends to a. So, when you take the limit of this as x tends to a x tends to a f x y g x. Mm, we are assuming here the limit a. Okay. Even we can take the limit a plus because we are not considering the function which simply we are taking function is differentiable at a okay? and then g prime a 0 define and differentiable. So, let us take the a plus here okay? that is equal to this. So, we take this a plus a plus in that case f x over g x is the limit of x tends to a plus f x minus f a over x minus a divided by g x minus g a divided by x minus a. So, limit of the ratio is the ratio of the limits. So, we get this goes to a prime a this goes to g prime a hence the result follows. Okay? So, but here the we cannot dilute this condition. The condition is must that the value at the point A both must be 0. So, this we cannot dilute. So, as a remark we can say uh, we cannot we cannot uh, uh, dilute the condition that f a equal to 0 equal to g a. Suppose, we have a function where the values are different and not equal to 0 also. For example, if we take the function f x which is equal to say uh, x plus 17 g x which is say 2 x plus 3 then obviously, f of 0 is 17 g of 0 is 3. Okay. So, f x by g x when you take the limit of this x tends to 0 plus from the left hand uh, right hand limit then it comes out to be 17 by 3 is nothing. Okay? But when you take the limit derivative of their limit as x tends to 0 plus then derivative come is derivative here is 1 here is 2. So, f a this comes out to be half. So, basically both differs the reason is because we have diluted this condition. So, this is not no longer this result valid if both are not having the value 0 at the point A that is very important and g prime is not equal to 0 that is very obvious from here because if g prime is 0 then we cannot divide it. Okay. So, that is why the condition is taken g prime a is different from 0. Okay. Now, here we have assumed the function attains the value 0 at the point a and the derivative of the function exists at these points is it not then only we can find the value. If the derivative or the functional value at the point a is not defined, but the limiting value is obtained then also we can apply the result and that is given by the La Hospitals and that will be known as the low Hospitals rule first. In fact, first is very important other rule is just extension uh, uh, case. So, that is <laughs> let a and b are two real number which may be real number which may be infinity or minus infinity also and let f and g be differentiable 
f and g be differentiable on the open interval a b such that such that the derivative of g does not vanish anywhere inside this uh, interval a b that is non zero for all x belongs to now suppose that the limit of the function f x when x tends to a plus is 0 which is the same as limit g x when x tends to a plus both are having the limiting value right hand limit exist and equal to value 0 let it be 1 then the result says if this condition if limit of f x over g x a prime x over g prime x when x tends to a plus if the limit of their ratio of their derivatives exist and is a real number l then the limit of the f x by g x when x tends to a plus from the right hand side will also exist and will be having the same value as the limit of f prime over g prime is there when x tends to a plus. The second is if suppose l is infinity or minus infinity. So, if limit of this derivative f prime x over g prime x when a tends to a plus is suppose l which is either in minus infinity or plus infinity only. Then the limit of this f x over g x when x tends to a plus will also be minus infinity or plus infinity depending on l. Okay. So, this is what is known as the law. So, what this Ellis plus rule says is that if we assume the differentiable t of the function. Uh, uh, differentiability of the function, but not necessarily at the point a, then the behavior of the limit of f x by g x and the behavior of the limit of f prime x over g prime x will be the same. That is the limiting behavior of f prime over g prime will be the same as the limiting behavior of f x by g x, whether l is finite or infinite or minus any real. Now, here second um, point which we also want to discuss. Though I have taken the limit a plus means the interval is this a b and we are taking the limiting value from the right hand side, but the same result continue to hold good when we take the limit b minus or a minus suppose it is completely defined or limit exist. If the function has a limit at the point x equal to a then we can replace a plus by a like this. So, if the limit of f prime over g prime at x tends to a is l, then the limit of f x over g x over x tends to a will also be l. So, in case limit f x as x tends to a exist and 0 and equal to the limit of g x when x tends to a. When f and g both are having the limit, I am not taking only the right hand limit let us limit exist. Then, if limit of this ratio f prime over g prime x when x tends to a is equal to a exist, then limit of their ratio will also exist and will be the same as l. It means the proof will remain the same whether we replace a plus by a or a plus by a minus provided the limits are there. If the left hand limit exists, we use this. If the limit exists, we use this. If the right left hand limit exists, sorry right hand then this left hand limit exists, then a minus and like this, but the result continue to hold good. So, we will establish this proof when the right hand limit exists okay? and for others cases the proof is the same. So, let us see the proof. Uh, now, let us take an alpha beta lying between a and b. Okay? Now, since the function g, 
since g which is given to be differentiable over a b since g is given differentiable over a b over a b and g prime x is not equal to 0. So, this automatically implies the value of g beta will be different from g alpha. Why the reason is otherwise otherwise by Rolle's theorem if a function g which is continuous over the closed interval a alpha beta differentiable over the open interval alpha beta g is given differentiable over alpha beta and if the end point alpha and beta the values are same then there will exist a point c lying between alpha and beta such that uh, that is a and b such that derivative of g at the point c must be 0 which contradicts our assumption that g prime a x never vanishes for any x belong to the interval a b. So, always this result will be true that g alpha is ok. Now, take the interval alpha beta apply Cauchy mean value theorem for the function f and g over the interval alpha beta. So, what the mean value theorem says if f and g both are continuous over the closed interval alpha beta differentiable on the open interval alpha beta then f of b minus f alpha divided by g beta minus g alpha is the value of the f prime uh, set c or f prime u divided by g prime u for some u in lying between alpha and beta. <coughs> so, by mean value theorem there exists an u belongs to alpha beta such that f beta minus f alpha g beta minus g alpha is the derivative this thing for some u ok. Let it be 2 clear this is by this. Now, let us take the case 1 say a what a it is given given limit of this this is given limit of f prime over g prime when x tends to a from the right hand side is l this is given. So, given limit x tends to a plus f prime over g prime derivatives is l ok. So, given so let us take uh, so if l is given that is if l is known which is in R and let f sin L be and if f sin L greater than 0 be given as some positive number. Now, limiting value of this is L it means when the point A uh, close to some interval say A C A C I take. So, whatever the point x in between this the limiting value of this prime is L mean difference is very very small. So, this lies between L minus f sin and L plus f sin. So, we can say there exist a C belonging to the interval a b such that f prime x over g prime x lies between L minus f sin L and L plus f sin L for all u let us be this u. So, let us take the all u ok all u for all u belongs to the interval a c ok. We can find the neighborhood of right neighborhood of a where if we take any point in that right neighborhood of a the this condition will be satisfied ok. But a prime u over g prime u we have already uh, find out from there is it not. So, uh, from 2 we have discussed this from 2 f prime over g prime is this. So, substitute this value. So, use 2 
hence from 2 we can say L minus F sinal is less than F beta minus F alpha over G beta minus G alpha which is less than L plus F sinal for A less than alpha less than beta less than equal to C. Now, take the limit take limit limit h alpha tends to a plus because a plus this limit will be 0 is it not. So, this limit will be 0 this will be 0. So, what we get is so we get l minus f sin r is less than equal to when you take the limiting equal to sign may also come. So, this is less than equal to f sin r and this is true for all beta belonging to the interval a c. Therefore, this shows the limit of f b x f x by g x when x tends to be because this limit is it not when this one is there. So, limit beta tends to a. So, when you take x in place of beta I am taking x. So, x tends to a plus is also l because here let beta approach to a from the positive side that is equivalent to say that x approach to a plus where x belongs to this interval. So, this shows there. Okay. The second case when l is plus infinity l is plus infinity and if m be choose greater than 0 is given because the limit is given to be l which is infinity. So, what do you mean by this? It means that there exists a c belongs to a b because this is given yeah. this is given this is suppose infinity it means when point is closer to a in the right in the neighborhood right neighborhood of a then this limit can this value can exceed any positive number. So, I am taking m to be greater than 0 then a number u can be obtained there will exist c such that for all u this condition is satisfied is greater than m for all u belongs to a c okay. and but since f sinal is arbitrary number this uh, sorry then from here this implies f of b this implies again substitute to so f of beta minus f of alpha divided by g of beta minus g of alpha is greater than equal to what m is greater than m uh, strictly greater than m for all alpha and beta lying between this bond okay, in the right neighborhood of a. So, take the limit as alpha tends to a plus and immediately we get the f beta over g beta is greater than equal to m for all betas belonging to a c and this shows since m is greater than 0 is arbitrary arbitrary large number. So, limit of this f beta over g beta when beta tends to a plus will be infinity infinity and that is follow. The other cases follows in a similar similarly we can show for other cases. Okay. So, that is prove the results. Let us see the use of this suppose I take the example uh, find the limit of limit of sin x over under root x when x tends to 0 plus. Now, if we look here the function f x is sin x g x is root x when x tends to 0 the limit of this basically f of 0 is 0 g of 0 is 0. So, value at the point 0 is 0. So, when you take the limit it comes out to be the 0 over 0 form, but the is root g x is not differentiable at 0. So, the first theorem which we have shown it will not be applicable. However, we can apply the Helmholtz rule because g x is differentiable 
in the open interval 0 to say any number 0 to infinity and and g prime x is not 0 on 0 to infinity and f x is also sin x is f x is also differentiable. So, there is sin function is differentiable and like this. Okay. So, we get and this is not required this is not required okay, up to here only. So, we get we can apply the Lenz-Schutt rule. So, L. Hospital's rule says that limit of this is will be the same as the limit of their differentiates uh, derivatives. If we differentiate the numerator and denominator separately, what you get is this limit will be the same as the limit of this that this one, but this is equal to limit to root x cosine x as x tends to 0 plus and now this is dominated by x. So, the limit will come out to be 0. So, answer is 0. Another example we can say suppose suppose I take the uh, this example say uh, e to the power x minus 1 and both side ok. Uh, take this example uh, log a, a e to the power x minus 1 over say x square limit x tends to 0 x tends to 0. So, it is uh, x minus 1 let us take this also ok x minus 1. So, what happen when you take x tends to 0 it is 0 over 0 form because e to the power 0 is 1 and this is 0. <coughs> so, it is indeterminate both the function f and g satisfy satisfy L s plus rule L s plus rule ok. So, apply it. So, by L s plus rule differentiate the numerator and denominator separately. So, if I differentiate e to the pi minus and denominator will get and then take the limit. So, by L s plus we get this thing this limit is the same as this limit, but again it is 0 over 0 form because again 0. So, again apply the L s plus rule we can repeatedly apply the expression so far the conditions of the Lisbeth's rule are satisfied. So, if we apply again then you get e to the power x by 2 limit x tends to 0 now this is half. So, answer will be half. So, this is one then other forms let us take Lisbeth's rule here a slightly different than the previous one let minus infinity which is less than the case which is not covered in the previous one minus a is less than uh, uh, equal to a less than uh, minus infinity less than equal to a less than b less than infinity or maybe at the most equal it may be infinity also and let f and g f g v differentiable f and g differentiable on the interval a b such that such that g prime x is not equal to 0 for all x belonging to the interval a b. And suppose suppose that g limit of g x when x tends to a plus is infinity or maybe minus infinity ok. Then if the following condition holds then if limit of f prime x over g prime x when x tends to a plus is suppose l belongs to r a finite number then the limit of f x over g x when x tends to a plus will also be l. So, here the case is this if f and g are differentiable okay, 
and the limit of gx is infinity or minus infinity. Suppose I take plus infinity and the derivative of g does not vanish anywhere in the interval, then if the limit of their derivative exists, then the limit of their ratio will exist. So, here is silent about the f x, f x whatever the f x value may be, okay, this will be l is silent on the f x, but it is defined and different. So, it is finite value defined in this okay, and this uh, limit will be this one okay, uh, silent about this. Second part uh, says if limit of x tends to a plus f prime x over g prime x is say l which is either infinity or minus infinity then the limit of their ratio f x over g x as x tends to a plus will also be l. Okay? The proof I am just dropping because the proof based on a similar lines as a except that here just I will give use the same lines use the similar lines as in previous case and then uh, x uh, and also use this use uh, the fact that limit of g x x tends to limit of g x as x tends to a plus is infinity. So, case 1 when you take the infinity suppose I take the infinity minus infinity will deal. So, if this is it implies that there exist we can assume we may assume we may assume that the value of g at some point c will be positive because it is going to infinity. So, after certain state it will cross 0. So, that a point c will come where it is greater than 0 and hence and hence and and hence the g of c by g of alpha when alpha tends to this, this uh, when edge alpha tends to and edge alpha tends to a plus and also sorry and also the fact also the fact that this thing when alpha tends to a plus. So, condition is given that a g x as a plus is infinity. So, this will go to 0. So, fact that g x over alpha as alpha is, is tending to 0 as x alpha tends to a plus because this tends to plus infinity and this is positive. So, this will go to infinity therefore, therefore, we may assume that we may assume that 0 less than g c over g alpha which is less than 1 for all alpha which lies in the right hand neighborhood of A. Okay? Now, using this fact and similar lines we can show the previous just from the three third uh, uh, proof of this as we have seen we can go the proof which in fact uh, from 3 3 if you remember this was third yeah this was this was the case when f alpha and zero. so beta equal to c if I put it then we get from here say third here. So, in third if I put beta equal to c put beta equal to c and then consider this uh, we get that l minus f sin r multiply all side by g c over g alpha because this is positive is less than f alpha by g alpha minus f c by g c is less than l plus f sin r into 1 minus g c by g alpha. In fact, this. So, <coughs> and from here edge alpha tends to uh, a plus we will get this limit will exist and limit will come out by calculations 
you will get it limit to be less greater than or equal to 2 epsilon l less than or equal to l plus 2 epsilon l. So, limit of this will be the same at like this. I am not giving the detailed proof, but you can work out and get the results. Okay. So, because this time is not permitting for that, we wanted to have some more results here. Okay. So, let us take the other determinant forms, other indeterminant determinant. forms. So, case by case let us take say first case is infinity minus infinity. I will give by example seeing that is case of this we are infinity minus infinity type. Okay. So, say for example, and let i is the interval 0 pi by 2 and consider the limit of this as x tends to 0 plus 1 by x minus 1 by sin x. So, when you take x tends to 0, it is of the form infinity minus infinity. So, how to solve uh, find out the value? What we do is we take the LCM. So, limit x tends to 0 plus this is the same as x sin x minus sin x minus x. Now, it reduces this is infinity minus infinity. Now, it reduces 0 by 0. So, apply the Hollis-Peters. So, when you apply the Hollis-Peters rule, differentiate the numerator and then differentiate the denominator. So, we get sin x plus x cos x and take the limit as x tends to 0 plus. If this limit exists, then limit of this will be the same as this. Now, x tends to 0, it is 0, again 0, so it is again 0 over 0, so on. So, further apply the Hellespeters rule. So, when you take the because all the f x and g x satisfy the conditions of Hellespeters. So, we get x tends to 0 plus cosine x is minus sin x divided by say cosine x and then x. So, again cosine x then minus x sin x. So, when you take the limit of this what you get is x tends to 0. So, that comes out to be now 0 over 2. So, this is 0 answer is this. Okay. Second case is say uh, 0 into infinity type. Suppose, I want to take the limit of this x tends to 0 plus x of ln x. So, when is x tends to 0, it is 0 into minus infinity that is 0 into infinity type. So, how to get it this one is what we do is we put it this in the form of 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So, if I take the ln x divided by 1 by x as x tends to 0 plus then it is infinity by infinity type. Okay. Of course, minus infinity makes no difference then apply the Hellespeters rule now. So, when you apply the Hellespeters rule 1 by x and here denominator we get the minus 1 by x square as x tends to 0 and then when it comes up you get the value 0. So, it is coming to be 0. Third case when it is of the form uh, say 1 to the power uh, uh, 1 to the power 0 1 to the power 0 for example, Suppose, I take the limit of this 1 plus 1 by x as x tends to infinity power x 1 to the power infinity sorry x tends to uh, infinity okay, 1 to the power infinity. So, it is when x tends to infinity this is 1 this is infinity. So, infinity to the power infinity. So, what we do is we consider this L limit L take the log. So, when you take the log it is come out because limit is a continuous function log will go inside and we get log 1 plus 1 by x and x tends to infinity. So, basically when x tends to infinity is it infinity into 0 type. So, this can be put it again either 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity type. So, we can put it this as 1 plus 1 by x divide by 1 by x limit x tends to infinity that is infinity over infinity type and then apply now Hellespeters rule. 
So, if we apply the ls putters rule, what we get differentiate the numerator, numerator differentiation will give 1 over 1 plus 1 by x and then derivative of this will be minus 1 by x square and then minus 1 by x square. So, and then take the limit as x tends to infinity. So, basically this limit comes out to be 1. So, since log of l is 1 is it not log of l is 1 therefore, so log of l is 1 therefore, anti log of this will e to the power 1 that is e. So, answer is basically e. Then next case is for when it is of the form say 0 into uh, infinite uh, 0 uh, into 0 type 0 power 0 type. So, for example, if we take the limit x to the power x when x tends to 0 plus. So, it is 0 to the power 0 again in this case take the L log and when you take log this problem is reduced to the case when it is 0 into infinity type. So, just like a previous one we can take it log x by x as x tends to 0 plus then apply it is infinity uh, sorry uh, 1 by x. So, infinity over infinity now apply the Hellespetus rule. So, when you apply the Hellespetus rule differentiate the numerator and denominator separately and take the limit when x tends to 0 plus and this limit will come out to be what uh, 0. So, the L will come out to be e to the power 0 that is one answer. Then another case fifth which is of the form say um, uh, 1 to the power uh, say um, again what what form left now infinity minus infinity we have taken and then uh, let us take uh, another case is uh, limit of this x tends to 0 0 into minus infinity x log x that we have already considered. So, I think this is all forms we have discussed is it not. So, let us see ok. So, we can say another form infinity and Mm. Let us take one more example, then is what we want. Suppose I take 0, say 1 minus x, x tends to 0, ok, into say 1 to the power infinity. So, let us take the 10 x, no, cot x, and x tends to 0. So, what this is the 1 to the power infinity. Okay. So, what how will you do it take L and then log L. So, log L will be equal to what cot x into log 1 minus x and x tends to 0 plus. So, cot 0 is infinity this is 1 0. So, 0 into infinity then again you can take log 1 minus x divide by 10 x and x tends to 0 plus. So, it is 0 over 0 apply Hellespetus rule and we get from here is differentiate numerator, differentiate denominator, take the limit when this goes to 0. So, when you take the 0 upper limit comes out to be 1 and this is sec is also 1 the limit will be 1. So, L will be equal to e to the power 1 answer will be this. So, that is what is so. So, it is almost we have completed this one. Now, let us come to the Toller's theorem. The Taylor's theorem it is an extension of the mean value theorem. Mean, mean value theorem we give the relation between the functional value and its first derivative whether it is a coach, uh, Lagrangian mean value theorem f b minus f a or b minus a, a derivative of the function or maybe the Cauchy mean value theorem where the two functions f and g are there and then we get the relation between f g and their derivatives. Taylor's expansion Taylor's theorem is an extension of the mean value theorem where we have a relation between f and its higher order derivatives and is basically used 
to approximate the functions uh, with the help of the first few terms of the Taylor series or Taylor theorem. What this theorem says is let n belongs to capital N okay, and let i is the closed interval a b and let f is a mapping from i to r be such that be such that f and its higher order derivatives derivatives say up to order n a prime f double prime up to f n the nth order derivatives up to r continuous r continuous on the interval i and that the n plus 1 a derivative exist on the in open interval a b. Now, if <coughs> if x naught is a point in the interval i then for any x belongs to i i there exist a point c between x and x naught such that f x can be expressed as f x naught plus f prime x naught into x minus x naught plus f double prime x naught over factorial 2 x minus x naught whole square and so on and then plus f n at the point x naught divide by factorial n x minus x naught to the power n plus the remainder terms r n x r n x where r n x is given by f n plus 1 c over f n plus 1 c over factorial n plus 1 1 into x minus x naught to the power n plus 1 and this is known as the Lagrange's form of the remainder Lagrange's form of the remainder. So, the function f is such which is differentiable and continuous up to say n plus 1 th order time and n, n plus 1 th order derivative exist in the neighborhood of the point x naught in the neighborhood uh, of the point x naught then there exists some exist in the open interval a b of course and the neighborhood of the x naught then there exists a point c where the expansion of the function f x can be written in the form of the series where the first n terms of the series is the uh, polynomials of degree n and the this term is called the remainder term and it is known as the Lagrange's form of the remainder. Now, in case if the remainder r n goes to 0 then this same expansion is known as the Taylor series expansion for the function f x. Okay. So, we will discuss it next time the proof of this thank you very much.